I'm joined right now by Dr. Larry Katz Nelson. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. You are the chairman of the Acromega League Guideline Task Force. Let's talk about these new clinical practice guidelines being discussed and put forth right now. The goal of the task force was to compilate a large literature on the diagnosis and treatment of this disease. We really needed to do these guidelines because there's been an outpouring of literature both on the diagnostic techniques, new medical therapies, and how to combine these medical therapies in addition to certain patient groups. So it was quite an undertaking, and what we did was review the literature on all these different fronts. For example, on diagnosis of acromegaly, there has been a long experience and a large literature on how to use growth hormone and IGF-1 measurements. This is somewhat problematic as we do not have specific target endpoints for these hormones on how to predict which patient will have comorbidities such as will have heart disease or have potential colon cancer, will have hypertension. We don't have that literature available to us, but what we did do was reviewed what was available to try to come up with concrete guidelines of how clinical physicians should approach this disease in terms of diagnosis. Another main goal of the guideline was to come up with therapeutic paradigms for the clinicians. For example, there has been new drugs that have come out in the past few years. There's been ideas of how we can use combination therapies and various algorithms we should use for the therapies that are available. And what we tried to do was to come up with a discrete algorithm for clinicians to use that takes up all the literature that has come up to the present and coming up with a paradigm for drugs. This was not the simplest thing to do, as there are uh, a number of different thoughts out there on how these medications should be used. But we did come up with a discrete algorithm for this. Clearly, a need is there. The advancements are great, but there needs to be a standard of care. As you're coming up with these guidelines, has there been any pushback or any controversy? There have been some controversies. Uh, controversies have included biochemical cutoffs for the diagnosis, which tests we should be using, whether it's growth hormone or IGF-1. And if so, what cutoffs should we be using for these? There has been some controversy, and we worked hard at trying to come up with a consensus on how that should be approached. Other controversies include the medical therapeutics that are available. What order should we use these? Should we be using these in combination? Should we take into effect cost-effective uh, concerns? So these have also been brought in um, to these discussions. Another realm has been one that we took on, which has not been discussed in prior uh, consensus statements for acromegaly, has been how to approach a female with acromegaly who gets pregnant. There are no set guidelines on these patients, and yet these patients do get pregnant, and there are concerns in management. And we reviewed the literature on this to try to come up with a very specific guideline on paradigms. How should we approach women who have become pregnant and have acromegaly? What therapeutics should we use or not in such patients, and how should we treat these patients? So that is another very important part of this task force guideline. When you are reviewing and going over the guidelines as a whole, how do you think they're going to impact the field? I think they're going to be very helpful. There is a large leadership of the endocrine society and there's a large segment of the population that sees these patients. And yet, there have not been enough guidelines that have really shown explicitly how patients should be diagnosed and how they should be treated. So I think the impact is fairly large. It will give set and discrete and specific guidelines on how these patients should be approached for the diagnosis and a nice algorithm tree of how these patients should be followed not only the routine patient, those patients that are more resistant to therapy, but also in the woman who is pregnant and now has to deal with the fact that she has active acromegaly and is pregnant. So these are where we think there will be a large impact for the community. I know a lot of people have worked on these guidelines and it sounds like they're going to be beneficial not only to the clinicians but the patients as well. Yes, we Thank think so. Thank you so much, Doctor. Pleasure.